Well, we're still talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit as he helps us to pray. And we are looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 27. We've already seen that as believers, we have infirmities. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, we are comatose. Without the whole help of the Holy Spirit, we are terminally ill without the help of the Holy Spirit. We are ineffective without the help of the Holy Spirit. We are like people who are plagued without the help of the Holy Spirit. We will not be able to accomplish what we desire to accomplish and even extending to the realm of prayer. We've already seen the first part of Romans chapter 8 verse 26, which says that um, he He helps our infirmities when we know not what to pray for as we ought. And we discover that we really don't know what to pray for like we should. We really don't know the words that we must articulate in order for our prayers to come back answered. I remember one time I gave somebody an example and I said, do you realize that you can be praying for two people? who are running businesses and both their businesses are not doing well. But as you listen to the Holy Spirit for direction, in one case, the Holy Spirit may actually say, just pray against the, 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 the curses that are causing poor business performance. And in another case, he may say, pray against literal thieves in the business and when you address those things like you should you begin to see those businesses beginning to thrive so that's what paul wants us to understand about knowing what to pray for as we ought i'm sure the bible tells us that whatsoever things we ask when we pray our father will do it and the bible also tells us that when this prayer is directed by the holy spirit our prayers will come back answered. Now, I want to look at uh, what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17, because that's when Paul brings the idea of the sword of the spirit. He is talking about the whole armor of God, and he has already told us that the loin belt of truth is the foundational armor, which is the logos, which is the word of God. But now in Romans, sorry, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, he wants us to understand the issue of specificity of the word of God because although the word of God is quick, although the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword, although the word of God is efficacious, although the word of God produces, although the word of God is going to perform, you have to appreciate that it is only the specific word that is addressed to a specific situation. In other words, that's why the Bible actually says faith comes by hearing and by hearing the God-breathed, spirit-inspired word, which is the retos or the rhema. So in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, when he says, taking up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, he's talking about that very God-breathed, God-inspired rhema word of God. And he says that is a veritable weapon that we must engage. And then he links it to verse 18, which is talking about praying always with all manner of prayer. So in other words, in the history of Roman combat, there were two kinds of swords at any given point. The first one was a long and sort of heavy sword, and it took both hands to hold it. It was never used for combat. It was used for strengthening and for exercising the muscles of the soldiers. But it was a daily routine. The soldier would exercise his arms. He would take it by both hands and swing it heavy and hard at stationary targets. I would consider that the logos is that sword. But then there was a shorter sword designed for combat designed for up and close and personal action. It was used for battle. We would have to say that the Bible is the big sword. 
if you swing it, if you use it, if you study it every day, it will develop your spiritual muscles. However, in specific situations, the whole Bible is not going to be effective. You have to get into the word. You need specifically, you need to know what you must say specifically to address a particular issue. You need to know specifically how to pray for a particular situation. So even when people say you pray the word, you don't just pray any word. You pray the specific word. You articulate the specific word. You begin to address the specific word. And when you do that, you will have positive results. Therefore, what Paul wants us to understand is that we can't even pray effectively without the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. If we want to overcome the frustration of an answered prayer, if we want to overcome the frustration of crying out to God and having very little results and very little to show for it, we need to lean heavily on the Holy Spirit. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to come and energize our prayer life. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to come and help our prayer life. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to come in and fall alongside us and partner with us as he stands anti and against what the enemy is seeking to do in the lives of the believers. In Jesus' name.